because I really love to f Welcome back to another episode of the GC Informer. I'm definitely not recording this straight after the yesterday's news. Definitely not. Not at all. We will start today with a couple of bits of Nintendo related news. Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon have had a new trailer come out that reveals the story isn't going to be exactly the same as Sun and Moon. In this new trailer it is revealed that you will take your legendary Pokemon on a ride over to the world of the Ultra Beasts which was part of the plot of the first set of games, Sun and Moon, but it's going to go a little bit further this time. For those of you who don't know, Ultra Beasts are sort of semi-Pokemon from a different dimension that do a thing and it's a bit weird and I don't quite understand. It's all a bit all over the place. <laughs> kind of the weak point of the story in my mind. Regardless, in the first game, Sun and Moon, you went to this dimension but you only were in a little cave bit of it and you just sort of did a thing in there and rescued people and that, that happened, that was the thing. And in this one, we're going a little bit further into that world. In fact, one of the places in that world is going to be called, is it Ultra Megalopolis, which is an awful name in English, as just a terrible mouthful that I hate trying to pronounce. And you will be exploring that and also face off against the a set of people called... I'm gonna have to look at my phone because I can't remember. They're called the Ultra Recon Squad, a weird name of four, for four people who presumably are reconning the world of the Ultra Beasts. Because, okay. Quite an underwhelming reveal, to be honest. There's three new Ultra Beasts as well, if you cared about that. Um, other than that, really, they've not changed a lot by the scenes of this. I'm still going to buy them because I'm a complete Pokemon sheep, but yeah was hoping for a little bit more change than that. The previous news won't harm Nintendo in any way though because they have reached a very nice peak in their share price thanks to the Switch. In fact it's their highest point in nine years since September 2008, that's when the financial crash happened. For those of you who are a bit too young or don't care about financial stuff, you can track that this was a result of the Switch because since March their share price has actually gone up by 87% which is quite astonishing and proves that while a lot of hardcore gamers are shitting on the Switch it is doing wonders for Nintendo's business which has been going a little bit sort of downhill since the Wii U launched. Regardless of what you think of Nintendo, this is definitely a positive thing. While I'm not a fan of some of their policies, such as YouTubing and streaming, I do like the games they put out, I like the consoles they put out, and this will hopefully see them in business for a bit longer at least, and keep them bringing out hopefully good games. Warframe is getting an update, and oh boy, is it a big one. Warframe is a game that has been constantly changing since its launch, and now, Instead of the sort of more linear progress through missions that you make in the game, there is now going to be an open world, at least one open world section to the game. The area is called the Plains of Eidolon and the first what sort of port of call there will be the main social hub of the game from now on. This is where players can just talk about, mingle, do some shopping, whatever, before they go out and do some questing. But having this game transition to open world is just a really amazingly large step. It's a step that not a lot of games make because they don't really, there's not really much point in quite a lot of instances. And even games where you think it might work, like Mirror's Edge, when they do try and make that transition into open world, like they did with Mirror's Edge Catalyst, sometimes it doesn't work. This is, of course, a big risk on the part of the developers of Warframe because this could go wrong and it could sort of put off people who have been sort of long-term fans who like the original sort of style, structure of the game, might be put off by this open world, but I think because it's an open world, it may well attract a lot more players to the game, especially since it's free. Regardless, leave your opinion in the comments below and the new update will launch next week so we will be able to see how well it goes. 
And speaking of updates, this is a one that's a bit of a while off, but EVE Online is a going to get a little bit more friendly for its free-to-play players. The free-to-play portion of EVE Online is sort of like a taster for the game. It lets you play the game but gives you a severely limited number of ships and skills that you can actually purchase and use. This can work as a business model, however I'm not a massive... I don't know, I, I quite like it because it's like a, basically a demo, but I don't know how well it's worked. Maybe it's not worked quite as well as EVE Online's developers might have wanted because they're now expanding the sort of things you can get as a free-to-play player. In a statement, one of the developers stated that they wanted to bring alphas, who are the free-to-play players, closer to omegas, who are subscribers, in terms of their strength as players. This will also allow a lot more weapons and ships to be bought, but also it'll increase the a level sort of experience skill cap that was previously on the game at 5 million skill points up to 20 million. So four times the amount. So you're basically getting four times the game for no money at all. And this is a very, very positive thing. I think this is a good way, a very, very good way to attract people to your game. They'll play it, they can get up to quite a long way in, about 20 hours or so, at least if not more, and be at this level cap and go, I think I might want to subscribe to this now. I think I might want to pay into this game because that's how you get people invested. Let them play for free for quite a long time before it sort of becomes a necessity to be paying in. At least they haven't done free mimic economics because that would just be the pits. So, <laughs> god damn, just people are awful sometimes with free mimic on it, economics. But this isn't the case here and they've expanded what was already, what was already a good idea and hopefully it'll pay off for them. Thank you very much for watching this episode of the GC Informer. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like, subscribe, or a share, whatever you fancy. And our social links are down in the description, along with a link to our Discord. If you like me, I can be found on Twitter at, at @snowyduffield, and I can be found on Twitch at twitch.tv slash metalnerddude. Stay tuned to Gamecast for more news, reviews, podcasts, or let's plays, lots of other stuff to keep you entertained and all your gaming needs. Thanks very much. Terra.